In the last lecture, we defined some routes for our Angular application. So if I go to VS Code, here we have created this app route module. We have this app route module class and we are decorating it with ng module decorator. And there we are creating some routes. So we are creating a route for root URL. So when the path is root URL, we want to render the view of home component. When the route is about, we want to render the about component. And when the route is courses, we want to render the course route module and we want to load it lazily. Now we have defined this course route module inside this course route module.ts file. And there also we are creating two routes, one for courses route. So in that case, we want to render the view of courses component and one for featured route. In that case, we want to render the view of featured component. Okay. Now currently, if we go to our application, you'll see that here we have an error and the error says router outlet is not a known element. That's because we are using this router outlet in our app component. So if I open app component.html, there you will notice that we are trying to use this router outlet directive. So based on the route which we have typed, we want to render the view of the associated component in place of this router outlet directive. Now this router outlet directive, it is provided by router module. But in our Angular application, we have not imported router module anywhere. Since we are creating standalone components, we don't have any app module in our Angular application where we can import the router module. So we don't have any router module imported in our Angular application. In the same way, we are also using this router link directive and this is also provided by router module. So to use this router link directive also, we need to import router module because the router module is the one which is going to provide us this router link directive as well as router outlet directive. So since we are using this router link directive and this router outlet directive in our app component and this app component is a standalone component, what we can do is inside the imports array, we can import the router module. So we are using the router outlet directive and router link directive in the app component, which is a standalone component. So there we are importing the router module. And when we have imported the router module in this app component, in the app component itself, we are using this router outlet directive. So now the app component is aware about this router outlet directive. It knows that it is being provided by router module. In the same way, the app component also knows about this router link directive. It knows that it is being provided by router module directive. So if you save the changes here, and if you go to our application now, that error is gone. So we don't have any error anymore. But the view is not properly rendered here. Now, why is that? You can see that we have the header here, but in the header, we don't see any link. So basically, in our app component.html, we're defining some navigation links. But these navigation links are not visible here in the header. So why is that? That's because here we are trying to render the view of an associated component to a route. So for example, when we have typed root URL here in the address bar, for this root URL, we have defined a route. If I go to app route module, for the root URL, we want to render the view of home component. But does Angular know about these routes? No, this Angular application does not know about these routes, which we have created here. Because again, we don't have any app module for this Angular application where we can register our routes. And since we have not registered these routes, this Angular application does not know about these routes we have defined here. So now what we need to do is we need to make our Angular application aware about these routes which we have created here. And for that, what we can do is we can go to main.ts file and there we can add the app route module to this providers array. Now the router module is not a service that we already know, but when we are using this for root method on this router module, it actually acts as a service. So what we need to do is in the main.ts here in the providers array, let me move it to separate lines to make it more readable. So here we are going to use a function and the function name is import providers from. 
we are going to call this function and when we are calling this function we need to pass the module class name where we have defined our routes we have defined our routes inside this app router module so we are going to pass that app router module here and to use this app router module we also need to import it and this line here it will make our standalone angular application aware about the routes which we have defined inside this app routing module and with this the application and the routing should be working now you will see that we don't have any error and the routing should be working now so currently the path is root url so in that case the view of home component is rendered if i go to about now the path is root url slash about so the view of about component has been rendered if i go to courses the path is root url slash courses and now the view of courses page has been rendered here so the routing is working as expected let's do one more thing in the courses component let's say we want to add a link for featured courses so let me open courses component.html and here i'll add a simple paragraph and let's say here you can see and then i'll add an anchor element featured courses and on this anchor element let's again add the router link directive and to that let's assign the path as featured let's save the changes now to use this router link directive inside this course component.html we also need to import the router module inside this course component so here we have this course component.ts file there we also need to import the router module now in order to import the router module for this courses component first we will have to convert this courses component to a standalone component that we will do in our next lecture but for now let's go back to our application here you can see we have that paragraph here you can see featured courses but currently this featured courses is not acting as a link that's because here we have used router link directive let me close it here we have used router link directive and this courses component does not know about this router link directive because we have not imported the router module here all right also let me show you one more thing so let's go back to our application let's go to home page first let's open developer console here okay and here let's go to network tab let me close this and let's clear everything here now what i will do is I will reload this application so you will see some bundles have been generated okay let me clear these requests here and now if i go to about page the about page has been rendered and we are not loading this about page lazily so you will not see any request sent here no bundle has been downloaded but if i go to courses link we are loading the components related to this courses link lazily so if i go to this courses link you will see that a new bundle has been downloaded for that courses so we are loading this module this course route module lazily and that's why when we navigate to this url it is going to load the code related to this route lazily so we can still use this load children in standalone components also to load a module lazily so the lazy loading is also working here and again in this application we have a mix of standalone components and regular components so for example this home component it is a standalone component and this about component it is not a standalone component it is a regular component we have not used this standalone property here so it is a regular component in the same way this courses and this featured component it is a standard component it is not a standalone component so in the next lecture what we will do is we will migrate these components also to a standalone component and then we will learn how we can work with routing with those standalone components and also we will learn how lazy loading will work with standalone components this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day